obstructive sleep apnea can have very different manifestations all the way from infancy to adolescence. Uh, the obstructive sleep apnea that you see in children and adolescents tends to be the more formally known uh, obstructive sleep apnea where you have snoring, you have snorting, you have gasping, you have arousals. And then in children, interestingly, you do not get uh, daytime sleepiness or tiredness. Uh, it's something that's seen much more common in adults. And when you do see something like that, it's severe sleep apnea. Infants tend to have uh, uh, snoring less often than you would see in uh, older children. They're much more likely to be silent or they may have strider. And what you need to look for is uh, thoracoabdominal movement that's asynchronous in association with uh, reduced airflow and oxygen desaturation. So you sometimes have to really carefully look for it before you realize that there is obstructive sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea in children is diagnosed by polysomnography where we monitor the uh, child's appearance by video. We look at their brain waves to see if they're awake or asleep. We look at airflow at the nasal level and we look at uh, thoracoabdominal movements to look for thoracoabdominal movement in association with a loss or reduction in airflow. So the causes of obstructive sleep apnea are very varied across the spectrum of age. Uh, the most common uh, causes of obstructive sleep apnea are in young children, you know, two to eight years of age, and that tends to be enlargement of the tonsils and adenoids. In uh, children less than two years of age, it tends to be adenoids much more than tonsils. And so the management of obstructive sleep apnea ends up being removal of tonsils and adenoids. On the other hand, as we go from ages three to four all the way to adolescence, we start seeing the presence of obesity creeping in, particularly with this epidemic of obesity. When you go to the youngest age group, it tends to be less commonly seen uh, syndromes and illnesses, such as Pierre Robin syndrome with a small jaw, laryngomalacia with relaxation of the uh, laryngeal uh, cartilage, or it could be something like coanalytresia. And then uh, a combination of all these is seen in Down syndrome where you have reduced anatomy and a reduced tone that you see through the lifetime of children with Down syndrome. Management of obstructive sleep apnea can have a significant impact on the quality of life and uh, academic performance. Uh, it is important since it's such a fairly uh, widespread uh, condition to screen for these at well child visits and ask the family if the child is snoring or has disturbed sleep. It is also important to know that as they get older, continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP becomes the predominant modality of management of obstructive sleep apnea, particularly the sleep apnea that is residual after removal of tonsils and adenoids.